In the future, you must be ever wary of evil nanobots. On your clothes, on your skin, and in the air. Because once they get you, it's over, Grover. Now, <laughs> as a test, I have released 30 rabbit nanobots into the candidate air supply. You put those in the air supply? Indeed. And in the coffee. <laughs> Robert, I already purged the coffee. Sorry, sir. Cyborgs, am I right? <laughs> Can't live with them. Can't throw them out the airlock. They just float back. <laughs> they're magnetic. So. <laughs> I had a picture. You see, back then, I have the, uh, the doom stash, just a, a danger beard. Captain, every oh, is it memory time? Yes, it is memory time. Captain, I just wanted to let you know that everything with the baby is okay. Good. He's in the pet corner and no one will be killed as long as they don't go back there. Wonderful, okay. wonderful. Uh, Captain, do you remember when you first met me? Ah, uh, yes. What a red letter day that was. I was adventuring on planet SR388 and in the low ground mist. I almost didn't see Gregory's space egg. But when he shoved his ovipositor down my throat, I knew it was fate. And two of us have been friends ever since. Companions, really. A man and his alien. An alien? Get the, get the, ah! Together. Get the... What? What is it? It was a robot. He just came out of the time machine and stole the fourth actuator. Nonsense. I just saw Robert. He's in the back, cleaning the coffee pot. Observe. Robert, I Come need you. Captain. See? Cleaning the coffee pot. <laughs> ah, Gregory here says you stole the fourth actuator. Yes. As if. See? <laughs> He's been in the back the whole time. It seems after all this time, Gregory, you still don't understand the intricacies of time travel. Ooh, I don't understand it even more, Captain. Well, then for your benefit, and for the benefit of the candidates, we're going to explain how time travel works! <laughs> now, allow this string to represent linear time. Oh, do we have enough time? Oh, looks like we're a little short on time, Robert. Oh, Robert, time's up. Oh, would you look at the time? <laughs> Stop wasting time! You're passing time! You said that just in time. This time's going to be different. Oh, we have plenty of time. Come on now, we have a lot to learn and not a lot of string. <laughs> <laughs> I get that. Uh, okay. oh, oh. All right. Now, let's allow this string to represent a timeline. Would you hold up the end of that, sir? Nice and tight. We wouldn't want time to slip through your fingers, now, would we? <laughs> <laughs> okay, and allow this model of our time machine to represent our time machine. Now, in order to arrive here in the year 2009, we traveled backwards in time. Observe. Whoa! And here we are, in the year 2009. Now, let's say we forgot something back in the future. Robert, what did we forget? I forgot to tape my favorite show, ZZ09. Ah, very good. Well, we'll use the immense gravitational pull of this pillar to slingshot ourselves back into the future. Like this. Whoa! And there you are. Here we are, back in the year 3037, safe and sound. And that is how time travel works. <laughs> now, in order to get past the annihilation point, we're going to have to do something a little bit different. Um, would one of you represent the annihilation point? Oh, 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 yes, oh, yes, oh, right oh, Gregory. Gregory. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, Robert, would you represent our time machine? <laughs> Robert, the time machine is just as important as the Annihilation. Captain!
37. Look at us, we're repopulating the human race. <laughs> oh no, the annihilation point has jumped to an alternate timeline. It's coming right for us. Do something, Robert. Um, another annihilation point. Candidate 